Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking about getting out of the truck. So you're ready to get out of the field. You want to work more in the office, but you don't quite know how. You don't know if you're ready. And that's what we're going to talk about today on WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? Uh, If it's your first time here, have a look around. We have five years of content. You're going to be able to catch up, uh, binge, and watch or listen to absolutely everything. And uh, some of it's not too bad. So go back, watch, or listen to anything and everything, anywhere podcasts are, and of course on YouTube. Also, if you are one of the OGs, if you are one of the cool kids, which the stickers are all behind me, If you are somebody who, of course, watches everything, you get something from the podcast, but more importantly, shameless plug, you've ordered from me, well, it is because of you that I get to, uh, you know, buy more hair gel, I guess. Everybody comments on that. So anyway, thank you, thank you, thank you. But it does mean the world to me. Um, I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com, and when you place an order through me, I get credit, that's how I exist on this planet, and it costs you nothing extra. So it's like this awesome virtual high five of awesomeness, awesome. So if I could do anything for you, shoot me a text at 862-312-2026. Even if you put everything in your cart, if you're logged in, I can see it. Just be like, yo, Jersey, my cart is good. And I will go ahead and just pull the trigger for you. And uh, yeah, it's easy, it's fast, and I make millions or not quite that much but i do make a chunk of it and that is how i live and another way that i live is of course awc magazine it's a magazine it's been around since 1986 i own it i would love you to get a subscription i would love everyone every window cleaner to get a subscription it's american window cleaner magazine and it's been around since 1986 and it's absolutely amazing you get articles and posters and amazing business stuff, just some really, really good writers, cool products, new tech, and of course the stickers. Every single uh, issue comes with a sticker sheet and uh, you can get it. And they're all window cleaning custom stickers, man. Uh, so go to awcmag.com and get a subscription. I get to see your name pop up and uh, it's like, oh, look at that. Fill in the blank. Just got a subscription. So anyway, I do appreciate that. Go and do that. Uh, Shameless plugs are all over. Today, we're talking about how to get off the truck. Now, I've done an episode like this before. Again, in five years, there's bound to be some kind of uh, overlap on some of the content. But I think it's worth repeating. Or not repeating. I think it's re re re-looking at it. Because some things have changed since we talked about it last. And there's always new people who are looking to get off the truck. This is one of the main questions that I get is how do I get off the truck? Hey, you know, come spring, I'm looking to be in the office. How do I do that? It's as scary as doing the whole kind of business thing for the first time because you are going to create a pay role for yourself but you're not going to be actually bringing in money per se in the work. So people get a little bit leery, a little bit scared or intimidated about doing that. But if your hustle is strong, if you are somebody who will earn your keep, and I've asked this question a hundred times, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, here's the question of the day. If you were to clone yourself or fire yourself, which would it be? Be honest. Be honest. Because there's a lot of seasons I would fire myself. Man, I just did not put the hours in today. I just was not feeling it. Man, I'm tired or burned out or ready for a vacation or a break, right? So there's a lot of times, we call them seasons, or I do, there's a lot of seasons where I'm like, man, I just have been phoning it in truly have. And now, if you have ADD, which 99% of business owners, of course, do, that's why we do what we do. But 
there's hyperfocus that comes with that. So sometimes you're really, really into it. And sometimes you're really just not into it. So I always find myself right now today, would I clone myself or fire myself? Good, good question. And uh, tell me your answer. But it's scary to get out of the truck. If you're already out of the truck, let's see if you did this kind of the right way. A lot of you are out of the truck, but there's some interesting things to kind of understand of what your new job or even if you've been out for a while. If you guys don't know my story, when I started a window cleaning company 16 years ago, whatever it was, I uh, did one job, one route job before I hired my first person. I knew I wanted to be in business. I knew I would want to be a window cleaner. Now, that doesn't mean anything against anything. You either, there's some of you out there that really, really love window cleaning and no matter what goes on, you just, just want to be in the field. Cool. Some of you are like, yeah, I just, I like the business side of it. Uh, I really like the industry, but I want to run a business. And those of you have techs that do it, but you're still in the industry running the business. It takes both kinds, right? And neither kind is wrong, by the way. And by the way, if you're never getting out of the truck, cool, clean clean wash on my friend it doesn't matter what you do uh just make sure you're happy i'm just some dummy who sits in front of a computer and stickers yep but anyway i digress um but uh there's a few things to think about because again when you get out of the truck your job changes but there's a catch 22 there's a catch which i'm told they say that word wrong but there is a catch 22 now, here's the thing. You will never have enough work for you to bring somebody else new on and still have 40 hours of work for everybody, right? Just can't exist. So let's go into employees real quick. If you have two employees and you need to bring a third guy and you're just getting too busy, you don't have... 40 hours for everybody and then another person jumps on and they have 40 hours like it doesn't work that way because they didn't absorb the 40 hours right they have to now everybody's hours are lower as you're building everything back up it's the same reason when you get off the truck you may be doing 40 hours of work now bringing on a person is tough because you want to bring on a crew right? You always should have a crew of two. Don't go higher than a crew of two. Don't go less than a crew of two. A crew of two on residential, in my opinion, is absolutely the most efficient and best way that you could do it. But if you're on cleaning, you're going to bring on a guy, but you're still going to be out in the field. Now you have a helper. You see a lot of people that do this merge, right? Oh, uh, how many employees do you have? Ah, it's me and a helper. So what happens is, now, all of a sudden, the helper takes some of the load, they're working, then it allows you to do your exit for the other person. But now, if you guys were doing 40 hours, your helper was doing 40 hours with you, now you bring somebody else on, they're both doing 40 hours of window cleaning, and guess what you do? You don't have any work to do as far as cleaning, right? You don't have 40 hours of slated work. Now, your job changes. Now, <laughs> what you do is different. So to begin with the merge, if you're trying to get out of the truck, should be you, then you and a helper, then the helper and a new guy who then becomes a crew, gets you out of the field. Now, I know in your brain, you're like, oh, man, but I want to be out tomorrow or whatever. Oh, I was hoping by spring I could. I get it. But if you don't do it properly, it's very, very hard to bring on a bunch of people. Like if you had, if 10 people came to you and were like, hey, we're awesome, we're amazing workers, we want to work for you. You couldn't hire all 10 people in one fell swoop. Maybe some of you could. But most of you could not because you don't have enough work for 10 people. That's like 400 hours of work just sitting there that you have to get done, right? And there's slow time to think about and everything else. So when you do that, you have to merge out a little bit more comfortably. And that's the cash 22. You have the work, you need the staff, you have the staff, you need the work. So merging yourself out has to be kind of a graceful exit. And it has to be kind of in that kind of, yeah, you, then you and a helper, then you out of the field with the helper and the other guy kind of in the field. 
But if you have a new guy in and now your helper is the one who knows everything, your helper has to be really good and your new employee has to be trained right. You're training clones. You want people out in the field that are as close to how you want things done as possible. Now, the truth of the matter is no one is going to be like you. No one's going to care because you know what? This is your baby. If this job or, or this business goes under, you don't just lose a job. You lose a company. Everything you've put into it, you lose. That's why your hustle is so strong, right? If your employee loses it, they go, oh, well, better go to the unemployment office tomorrow and get a new job, get some unemployment, do whatever. They don't care as much. Now, nobody wants to lose their job. I get that. But there's no way that your employee will ever, ever care about this, this thing you created like you. So you're never going to find somebody exactly like you. And people really get hung up on this. They're like, ah, oh, yeah, I got this guy, but he just doesn't do it exactly like me. I just can't hire people for who they are, but have them do the work like you would. A person is still individually themselves, higher on personality, higher on communication, higher on who they are, teach them how to clean a window. I 1000%, 1000% will tell you that no one who's doing what we do, no one is going to be exactly the same across the board. And the problem is when you bring somebody on, you only see the negatives instead of the positives. What we do is not hard. Before, hold on, hold on. It is hard to be amazing at what we do. It takes work, right? How many people got into this like, oh, it's so easy. Watch, look at, look at Steve-O doing... Look at Steve-O doing um, this Windows. Oh, man, it's so easy. And they start doing it, and they're like, yeah, my equipment's bad. My gear doesn't work. Uh, this water-fed pole is broken. It's leaving spots. No, that's you. No, I've been cleaning. You've never water-fed. Like, how are you expecting to be amazing at something that's brand new? You can't. You can't expect to be amazing at something you're first trying out. Right? So window cleaning itself is easy. I could teach anyone to clean a window. I mean, there's robots that you can buy from China that clean windows, right? But it's the person you're hiring. I can't teach somebody to not be a POS. I can't teach somebody to not be able to communicate with somebody better. I can't teach somebody who I need to be an extrovert to be an extrovert. It just doesn't happen. So you have to find somebody who is already that and then teach them how to clean windows. That part's easy. Teaching the window side, that part's easy, right? So when you're training a new person or bringing somebody else on, you need to have them be a clone like you. Hire them for personality, but clone how they clean. They don't have to be just like you. They just have to clean to a degree that you would be happy with. And the big thing is, is people want to make clones of themselves in every aspect. Well, you know, I like to be a little bit more talkative with the customers and they're a little bit shyer with the... Okay, well, that's the person you hired. The cleaning, if you want them to fan, they will fan. If you want them to make sure to wipe the sills, if you're a good trainer, they will wipe the sills. If you need them to clean the tracks, they will clean the tracks. Like, you can teach them how to do the cleaning. You can't teach them how to be a person. Hire for the human and teach for the job. This is the hardest part. I, and again, if you have employees, maybe you already know this, but so many people, so many people, they basically, they want so much to leave the field and then somehow have an image or a um, hologram of themselves cleaning. They were like, well, I leave. I want the exact same thing there, but it's just not possible. No one is going to care for your business like you. You have to understand that, and you have to actually believe that. You have to understand why, too. They don't have as much vested interest as you. So no one will ever care about it. It's not their fault. 
It's not that they are not great employees. It's just that they're not you. They just don't. It's not their company, right? So train clones on their cleaning, but hire on their personality. We talked about it just a second ago, but your job changes now. If you're out of the field, guess what? You still, right now, work eight hours a day or 10, whatever, but you don't get out of the field and then be like, well, I guess I'm working an hour a day. I guess I'm going to go play some video games. I guess I'm working on my golf game. You don't get to do that right away. The reason is, is because your company is still a baby. You can't go, well, I have a kid. Uh, they just turned one. I guess I'm I guess I'm going out of town for the weekend. They'll be fine. No, the baby will die. So will your company. That's the most morbid analogy. Ah, I digress. Okay. Just pretend I didn't say that. But it will, right? Your company will die without you there. So you need to get out of the field and work eight hours a day in getting work for your company. Your job changes from doing the work to now getting the work. Getting the work. That is your job. Your job 100% as soon as you get out of the field is getting work so that they are busy. That is the biggest and best benefit of you getting out of the field. The best thing you could possibly do is be out of the field so you can get your company work. Now, if you're out in the field eight hours a day, you are not out there actively getting yourself more work. Your growth will never, not ever, in a million years, ever be anywhere close to the same as if you're not in the field. That is not a dig on your company. If you are a sole prop or you're out in the field, you just love it. But you're out there. You're not out there for growth. You're out there for maybe strength, which is super important. But you're not out there for growth. If you're out of the field, that is when you start seeing massive changes. Because here's the thing. Instead of you doing the work, you have somebody doing the work. Your job now is eight hours a day of getting the work for those people. You go, well, I want to get out of the... but. Sometimes we only do 30 hours. Well, guess what? Now you're doing eight hours a day of getting work. You're going to fill that other 10 hours crazily fast, amazingly fast. Think about this. If I took you right now and I put you and said, hey, for eight hours, get yourself some more work. You're telling me you would not have more work? I guarantee you'd walk away with that day with, with 10 new jobs. Now you're out there selling route, following up on route. If you're not doing route, you're doing marketing. You're increasing your presence and you're on social media. You're creating pages and creating B-roll and making ads. You're putting stuff out there. You're getting print done. Your five ups are looking amazing. You're getting those done EDDM. You're doing flyers and packets. You're also doing commercial folders. Eight hours a day to build your company. This is why when you look at these giant companies, giant companies, again, Coca-Cola, Google, there are thousands. Let's just say everyone who does not have anything to do with touching the soda, packaging, boxes, shipping, any of that stuff. Let's stop just at the business side. Not anybody has anything to do with actually making the soda and there are hundreds of employees, CEOs, CFOs, marketing, HR. There are so many people working on the business to create the business. You could not have Coca-Cola, have everybody who's involved in making the soda, and then one person who has to watch it all. It just doesn't happen. There's too many things that need to happen. There's people. It, okay, let's just do this. WCR. If you didn't know about windowcleaner.com, window cleaning resource, we have like 30 people work here. They're not sales, right? There's only like six of us and there's only one of me. Huh? Shame, <laughs> shameless plug. But there's like 30 people. Out of those people, there's some warehouse people who do absolutely amazing. If you bought from us, you know, everything ships same day. If it's before five, they're just, they're, they're rock stars. They do amazing. But in order for them to do what they do, we have Jess, who's social media. We have Elle, who does all video content and content creating. We have Justin, who does uh, graphics. It makes amazing 
art for every type of ad and everything. We have Gina who runs everything on the website from pictures to structure to everything. We have Amber whose only job is zero products. She's all of that and purchasing just on that one line. We have Ben who's a purchaser. We have John B who's a purchaser. We have all of these people who have nothing to do with shipping or selling the product. But we have these people because we need the company to exist on a bigger level. We have these people. They all work in the same office. They're all 40 hours a week plus. These are all full-time positions that have nothing to do. We have a CAD design person who literally just CAD. That's 3D, you know, uh, three-dimensional designing work. That's all he does every day, all day. We have builders. We have so much support staff on top of everything to make the rest of it work. The bigger the company gets, the more you have to have that. Imagine if you had somebody who eight hours a day just did marketing, just did Facebook ads. That would be crazy. You'd have so much content out there, right? Well, that's what we're doing now is you're getting out of the field, your job changes, and now your job is to get work. It doesn't matter how you get the work, it matters that you get the work. If you are out of the field and you are not getting as much work as you think you want, it is your fault. Now, tr hard truth or not, I mean, you could care less. Don't change anything you want. Don't change anything just because I'm, I said it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to like tick people off. I'm just saying that if you really sit back and look at it, it's your job. You're the one who's doing the marketing. You're the one that's doing the advertising. You're the one that's doing the sales. You're the one that's doing all of the things that bring in work. If you're not happy with your sales and you're out of the field, there's nobody else to look at. Yeah, economy can suck. Pivot. Uh, yeah, that new guy came in and he's half your price. Who cares? It's your job to go work harder. Work harder work harder to get that stuff now you're out of the field you have to work harder than you ever have before to get this thing healthier if you're a parent or you have parents which you do or had mm -hmm. when that baby is new it's so much harder they don't sleep they're up every couple hours right the beginning is always harder until the momentum happens until the health comes in until things kind of start running smoother you are in the infant stages it's going to take a lot more work to get there but as that ball starts rolling all of a sudden now you got two guys that run their own crew your job of getting new work has been so amazing that now you're on a whole nother level you're hiring another crew well now you got two crews well guess what Going from one crew to two crew is a crappy switch because you're going from 40 hours, maybe they're working 50 hours, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm pushing them so hard, I gotta get some more people in. You get another crew in and now you're, all you're doing is splitting 50 hours. Everybody gets 25 hours. Now you gotta work really, really, really hard to get you back up to 40 on each crew. It's just the truth, right? Your job changes. But understand the slow times when you have people, no matter where you are, you're going to see on the internet, people go, well, I don't have any slow times. You sure do. You don't have any times where you don't, you just stop. But there's billion percent things slow down. Look at the numbers. I guarantee, guarantee there's not a company out there, prove me wrong, there's not a company out there who has the exact amount all year round. There are slow times and there are busy times. Some times of the year, you're booked out five weeks. Sometimes you're booked out two weeks. It just happens. You have to just understand it. We are squirrels. We get it when we can for the times we can't. So you just have to understand that you're hiring people on, but you're a seasonal business. Understand the slow times and plan for the slow times, right? Because here's the thing. When you bring a crew on, you still work. Even in the slow times, you can still work on your advertising, getting printing, marketing, doing all that stuff. But... Your techs are the only ones that are doing the work. If there's less work, they have less hours. So just understand the slow time and work out how to work through that. That's another part that's very scary to people. Like, well, what happens when you slow down? 
every they slow down. They they don't work as much. Oh man, don't they don't they hate that? Yeah. They want you to work harder to get more work, but it's inevitable. It's going to happen. Now you talk about how do you get into seasonal unemployment for winters, depending on what state you're in and what are you going to do? Maybe I'm going to push, I'm going to sell way more commercial stuff so that we can do the commercial stuff in the winter so that we can give those guys something to do. Make it through so spring comes and boom, we're up again. Understand the slow times. Don't fight the slow times. Just understand them. And you have to get out of the field in order to find what you're most valuable at. Because I've already done 30 hard truths, I'm going to do 31. The hard truth is the least important part of your entire job or your entire company is cleaning the windows. That's the least important part of your job. I will fight on the mountain because every time there's some troll out there, or maybe you're not a troll, maybe you're, I don't mean that. But trolls tend to argue this a little bit faster. But but they'll say, if you just do good work, then you'll get a big company. Well, that's completely passive and it's completely ignorant. Give a better experience and you'll have the same amount of work. You don't even have to clean the same. You don't have to, you can't do crap work, but you're telling me that you do 100% perfect windows versus 95% windows? No one ever will care, ever, except you. But what really matters is that if I hire somebody, say I'm paying them 20 bucks an hour to start, <clears throat> okay? You're already making the rest. So say for even numbers, you're at, we'll say uh, $80 an hour, man hour. That's how much you charge. That's like what your, your, your rate is, right? If you're not somewhere close to that per man hour for the entire day, you're doing it wrong. Anyway. Uh, it doesn't have to be 80, but I'm talking about if you're still doing 50 hours with drive time and everything, you are completely, you're doing it so wrong. Your bidding is off. Your zones are off. Focus on it. Anyway, you're charging $80 and you're paying $20. So that means regardless, you're making 60 bucks when your employee does the work, right? So 60 is off the table. The only thing we're talking about only thing you're talking about is the $20 they're getting paid. So if you're out in the field cleaning, you're making $20 an hour. Do not for one second go, I'm making a hundred, I'm making $80. And you're not, you're making $20 because if you hired somebody, you'd still be making the other amount. That's off the table, regardless if you clean or not, you're only making $20 an hour. So right now you doing that is worth $20 an hour. That is only $20 an hour. If you're out there doing sales, building your company, marketing, and everything else, you are not bringing in $20 an hour for your company. You're bringing away more. You're building the company. If you go do really good sales, your marketing's on point, your everything's on point, you're earning the company $250 an hour, do that. Don't do the $20 an hour thing. Find what you're most valuable at and do that. Are you really good at marketing? Do that. Are you really good at social media? Do that. Find where you make the most amount of money and do that. This is where split testing comes in. Testing side, but marketing, advertising, that type of thing. Right? I talk about Justin Monk, SEO. That's on a separate side. So SEO by far, still the absolute, absolute greatest thing you can do for your business. But look at everything else for just a second right? If you're really good at Facebook, right? Or you're really good at EDDM, your EDDM campaign earns you 3% ROI. Everything else is 0.5. Well, you should still do everything, but you should put way more money into your EDDM because you're really good at that. It's bringing you in more money than everything else. Find what you're good at and do that. If you're good at something, do that something. If you're good at cleaning windows and that's the best thing that you're at, find somebody who does the marketing. If you're really good at windows and you want to stay in windows, but you're trying to maybe do something with your company, get a Facebook advertising. Again, Monk actually does that. 
Uh, they have the uh, Ryan, phenomenal guy. But Monk SEO, if you're looking it up, everybody asks me that all the time. Um, but um, uh, what's it, Ryan? I'm doing another show with him probably. Anyway, awesome. You want a Facebook ads guy? Hire him. If you're not good at Facebook ads, hire them. Find what you're good at and do that. I'm telling you, you can get out of the truck. It's a big, scary thing. But remember when you got into business, you might not even remember how scared it was when you took that jump. You're going to do it again. But that's okay. We've done there, been that. Been <laughs> done there, been that. Been there, done that. You've already realized that um, there is more security in what you do as an owner of a business than working for somebody. You already know that. You're still in charge of your destiny. You are. So do it. If this is what you want to do, do it. If you don't, you want to stay in the field, sweet. Anything you decide to do is right because it's your company. You're always right. Okay. I got worked up. I'm sorry. This is a big passionate thing for me. I really uh, like when people get off the trucks because it's a big, 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 big eye-opening moment to realize if they got it or they don't or what they're doing. So if you want to get off the truck, do it. It'll absolutely change your world. And the only way that you can scale a company is to get off the truck. So if you need supplies, if you need supplies, I'm here for you. Listen, are you listening to me? My name is Jersey and I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. Jersey like the state. My number is 862-312-2026. Please, please call me. Text me, even better. I text all day long. I text to like 50 different people a day. I text so much. That's good. I love it. Um, but you want to put in an order and you got something, put it in your cart. Instead of just hitting the button, talk to me. Remember, if you put an order in after five o'clock on, say, Friday, all the way through till Monday, it's not going to ship till Monday. So all these people who are out there and they're like, text me at like nine at night on Friday and they're like, I put this order in. And then at like 9.15, they're like, I'll just do it. I need it now. Nothing changes. You, nothing has happened. You, we're not shipping at nine on Friday. We're not shipping on Saturday or Sunday. The shipping companies do not pick up on those days. We do not ship after five. We don't ship on Saturdays and Sundays. Anyway, there's nothing more frustrating. People are like, I put my order in. I'm like, yeah, sweet. Let's do it. And they're like, oh, I couldn't wait. I waited 12 minutes. You didn't. Like, what? I'm up in the mountains on the weekends, man. No, but uh, do, I do, I do, I do want to put your orders in. That's what I do and uh, what uh, I exist. And by the way, I live with uh, all uh, women. I have two daughters and my wife. So there's a lot of shopping. I need the money. <laughs> Speaking of, go to awcmag.com. Get a magazine subscription. Do it. We have hit an awesome goal. Uh, we're, we're, we're breaking records. It's the most subscribers we've ever had. Uh, and I know you may not be a subscriber yet. So why not? You're listening to a podcast. Go and get the magazine. And really, on a side note, not being funny, if you get a magazine subscription, absolutely. Uh, it's amazing. It is so awesome to me when you guys go above and beyond to do that i just really really want to say thank you and um it really means the world especially the magazine stuff when you order from me that's awesome i want to be a rep but the magazine stuff too i know a lot of you watch this and then get that and it's just like oh it makes me feel it makes me feel loved so thank you thank you thank you until next week go out there and uh decide if you want to get off the truck but more importantly be epic